Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Apostolic Life Cathedral this Sunday evening. Praise God. We're glad to be in the house of God this evening, and we believe God has something special in store tonight. Amen. We're going to go ahead and just start lifting up the name of the Lord. If you'd like, you can stand and join with, uh, with us. We're going to sing through this course, and I hope that you'll, uh, you'll understand the meaning of this course. There's power in your praise. Amen. How many of you remember the story of Jericho when those walls came tumbling down, when the people of God started to send up a shout, started to send up a praise to their king? Those walls just started falling down into the ground. Amen. I don't know what you maybe came here with, but there's power in your praise. Sing it with us. There is power. here on the platform. I didn't come here just to look around and see all the pretty faces. Amen. But I came here tonight, hallelujah, hallelujah to God. I came here tonight to meet Jesus tonight. And when I leave here tonight, hallelujah. I want to go, go home and tell my wife, honey, I met Jesus tonight. Amen. I met Jesus tonight. Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, I call on the glory of heaven tonight. 
But as the old song sang, heaven came down. And glory filled our soul tonight. We come into this house tonight. And we call on the name which is above every name tonight. That you may meet every need in this building tonight. That you would saturate us tonight from the top of the roof uh, to the bottom of the carpet. Uh, that we would know that we have been in the presence uh, of the almighty God tonight. And we pray, Lord, tonight that as this broadcast goes out, as people listen to it down through the week, that the anointing power of God would be on it. Uh, that every time they turn it on, uh, that something would get a hold of them uh, and stir them uh, and move them on. Uh, because greater is he that is in us uh, than he uh, that is in the world uh, tonight. Uh, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. The Glory. book of Psalms tells us to praise him with the timbrel and with the dance. I think Brother Porter's right. We got something to be excited about tonight. Amen. Did he give you a reason to dance? Did he give you something to shout about? Something to clap about? Come on. If he did, why don't you worship him tonight with the worship that he's worthy of? Hallelujah. Sunsets free 
morning's here and I'm grateful for the Savior God up in victory. Dancing out of my grave clothes, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Morning's here and I'm grateful for the Savior God up in Everybody together. Hallelujah. He is alive. He is alive. Hallelujah. He is alive. He is alive. Hallelujah. He is alive. He is alive. Well, he's alive this evening. Praise God, because he's alive. Oh, he is, he is forever lifted high. Oh, he's forever glorified. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus.
in here right now. Glory. We want it here as in heaven. We got to take this opportunity right now. I said we want it as here as in heaven. So why don't we just shout holy one more time. Holy. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Don't stop because of me. Well, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that Holy Ghost presence I'm feeling right now. Woo. Somebody's getting their joy tonight. Joy. You might have not have felt it already, but somebody's leaving here with their joy tonight. Joy, joy, joy. <laughs> Woo. Elders, come on down. Somebody better ought to run to this altar to get their joy. All the Holy Ghost is here right now. Why not? Yeah. Whew. Don't worry about embarrassing yourself. I'm going to run out of breath here. That's all right. Whew. St. Mary's, we got George Thacker, Jane Morris, Nancy White. King's Daughters, we have Margaret Thomas. Cancer, we have a lot of names on here. We got Vonda Howe, John Myers, Donna White, Joseph and Pam Hose, Callie Boyd. Eddie Hill, Brenda Rogers, Pam Ed Edmonds, Ron Mealing, Harold Hoffman, Jack McGlasney, Natalie Kruger, Kelly Barrett, Sheila Edwards, Charles Maynard, Luna McClanahan, Gloria Faulkner, Dreama Matovich, and Tommy Amos. Whew. Nursing homes, we have Bruce Wright, Lova Wright, Lucille Dirch, Barbara Aliff, Patty Gay, Wilma Tolliver, Shelby Tackett, Gary LeMasters, Carol Soule, Dale Kermines, Rolanda Johnson, Lily Markham, Donna Glass now, Vicki Wilkes, 
Joyce Holly, Annabelle Adkins, Jerry Ty, Betty Mendoza, Suzanne Mamel, Marsha Morgan, Alminda Kermeens. Special requests, we have Bob and Linda Rose, Robert Barrett, Hayden Smith, Gil Rogers, Madge Wells, Tom Moreland, Israel, Jack and Vicki Pullen and the Walls family. Ill at home, we have Greg Robbins, Tony and Jackie Walls, Burl Duncan, Ken Davis, Jim Myers, Bob and Jan Kitchen, Brandon Armstead, Judy Myers, Marilyn Bradley, Francis Barrett, Bob McChristian, Pauletta Holly, Davy Kitchen, Gary Ross, and Chad Angel. You know, a word's been repeating over my mind. It's the Holy Ghost works in crazy ways. I shouldn't say it's crazy because it happens for a reason. They started singing that song about power. Well, that word power has been going over and over in my mind today. If only the power that you knew you had in your body right now. Oh, you could cast 10,000 demons out of somebody. If only you knew the power that you had. Why don't we just start praying to that power? Why don't we lift both our hands right now? If you got a need in your body, why don't you sprint to this altar? God, we love you tonight. God, I got a need in my body that's been aching. It's causing me pain. God, I want delivered from that tonight. Go ahead, lift your voice right now. He's here right now. That Holy Ghost power is here right now. God, I want to touch the hem of your garment tonight. God, I don't want to be unashamed. Oh, come, oh, come on, somebody. Pray out loud. He wants to hear your cries tonight. Oh, thank you, God, for the miracles. Thank you, God, for the joyous spirit. God, outpour a blessing on this. Oh, Jesus. God, I want to fall on my face tonight. I want to cast every care down at your feet. God, it doesn't matter what I want. It doesn't matter what I want. Because it's your will. God, I want your will. Your will done in here tonight, God. But I know you're about to break some change. You're about to bring a brown breeze tonight. Oh, God, remind us daily that we're forgiven. Thank you, God, for that mercy that you bestow upon us. Even when we feel unworthy, we're made worthy by the blood that you shed. Oh, go ahead. He's not done turning some things over. You got to keep praying for that joy to hit you. Sometimes you just got to act a little desperate. Because there's power in here. There's power in that name, Jesus. If you don't know what to say, just start saying that name, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 God, I need help. I need you to knock down some Jericho walls in my life. Whether it be addiction, whether I'm attached to something I don't need to be. God, maybe I've got relationships in my life. Maybe i got a friend that's weighing me down. God, if it's against your will, I want you to tear it down. God, give us that boldness in the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's a grandmother in here. 
here right now that hasn't seen their kids in church in a long, long time. I know it's breaking your heart. And that's all right. But we're not going to embarrass nobody. Because everybody's going to lift their hands right now. But if you got kids that aren't in church, don't you just lift your hands right now. The greatest thing you can do as a Christian is intercede for that person. You've been praying for a long time. God's about to give you peace. You just got to ask him for it one more time. Come on, somebody. Why don't we all lift our hands and join in unison? We want to be unified. Why don't we all lift our hands one more time? God, put it back in the views. God, change their heart. Change some things in their minds tonight, God. Give that grandmother peace. Give that mother peace. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you for that anointing, God. I know you're going to do it. I've seen you do it before. Turn it from, from Saul to Paul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, somebody in Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus' name. Claim your victory in Jesus' name. Amen. bones. Well, I've got joy, joy, joy when I think about the Lord, when I'm standing in his presence. I say, give me more and more. It starts moving in my hands. It goes way down to my feet. I get joy, joy, joy all over me. Well, I get joy, joy, joy when I think about the Lord, when I'm standing in His presence, I say, give me more and more. It starts moving in my hands. It goes way down to my feet. I get joy, joy, joy all over me. Joy, joy, joy. Way down to my feet, I 
baptized this morning. Oh, if that doesn't make you shout for joy, if that doesn't help you get there. Oh, so Oh, the kingdom is growing. The kingdom is growing. Are we ready to see the revival that's never been seen before? Are we ready? I don't hear you. but I didn't know Jesus' name, who he really was, until I started coming here. Who is he? Who is he? But who is he? God. God. He's not the little child of God. He's not the, oh, the son that was in heaven beforehand. That's what I was taught. Who is he? God. There's only one God. What's his name? What's his name? Oh, yes. Call on that name. Yes. Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wow. We're going to have a few announcements. But, man, is he not good? Oh, is he not good? Did that, do, you, do you not feel that presence? Fill in this room. Fill in your spirit. Fill in your heart. Oh, he's there. The youth department is selling Easter eggs. Well, they're not Easter eggs. They're peanut butter, chocolate covered, something or other. And they're out there in the foyer. They're $10 each, and it goes for a good cause. It's going for the children ministries. So please reach out there and grab one. I don't I have a, a confession to make. I don't like peanut butter. I know I'm weird, right? But I don't like peanut butter. So I told him next year, I need some coconut eggs, and I'll buy more of them. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is today is the last day for the Save Our Children to, um, offering. So we talked about this, and the kids that we have in here, that's who are going to reach our lost. Molly? Stand up. That's where this offering is going to. Future ministers, future praise worshipers. That's where this is going to. Reach down. This is the last day of it. Please give. Um, we also have Tuesday night Bible study, which we all know about. Please be here because I promise you, you learn more on Tuesday night than you will by reading a week's worth of the Bible. The pastor does a great job, and whoever he has teaching does a great job. Thursday, there's a 7 p.m. half-hour prayer meeting and then a Bible study by Brother and Sister Walls. And then something new that the youth are doing, it is the Bible studies that are on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. in the Cedar Sanctuary. Um, I might not qualify as a youth, but I might come. <laughs> Y'all can come, okay? We might learn something from the youth. Wouldn't that be awesome? April 5th. Is the fifth Friday youth night. Sanctuary praise in Culloden, West Virginia. Can I have a testify, t somebody testify from the youth that tells us that how good this, these have been going on? Amen. Anybody? Like them? Daniel? <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Y'all are having a great time. Come and, and join with them. Now, the ladies are having the conference that's at North Charleston Apostolic Church. And this is coming up the 25th through the 27th. Now, it's going to be Thursday at 6, Friday at 9, and 6, and Saturday at 9. Please get your tickets. Today's the last day for it. They start, uh, they, they have to be postmarked April 1st. If you don't have your tickets, Sister Robbins, I know, I think you have tickets. Yes. Who has tickets? You know? Sister Star. Sister Star. You're all gone. Missy's is all gone. Man. Who's got him back here? Who? Sister Kunzman? Sister Kunzman, you've been slacking on us? 
Man. Now, Sister Koonsman's got your tickets. Reach out to her. Get them tonight, please, because this is the last night of it. All right, so praise team, going to give it back to you, and we'll go from there, right? Huh? Offering? I guess I'm doing the offering. Hey, be instant, in season, and out, right? We have a children's ministry offering that's coming tonight, but we also need to pay our tithes and offerings because God's worthy, right? Right? <laughs> he doesn't ask for a lot. He really doesn't. But the blessings he pours out when you give with a cheerful heart are more than what you can ever imagine. Try them and see. If you are not given your tithes and offerings, I want you to taste the Lord and see how good he tastes when he goes you and takes you and moves you into that next position, that next step up. Oh, the Lord is so good. The Lord is so good. He takes us out of that pit. I've been there in that pit. He raises you up. He pulls you up into places that you would have never imagined. Are you ready for that step? Let's give Give to the Lord with all your heart and all your soul because he's worthy. Jesus, Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for everything that you do for us. Jesus, Lord, we want to give to you for the kingdom, Jesus. We want to give to you so we can see the ones added to the kingdom, Jesus, for your word to be preached to all the nations, Lord, because we know you're coming, and you're coming soon. We know, Lord, there's such a short time, and we need to give, Lord, to you and to your kingdom so that more can be born into the kingdom. More can be filled with your spirit, Lord Jesus. More can be baptized in your name and take on your name and be able to go to heaven with us, and we can fill heaven Lord, we ask that you'll take this offering just as you did with the five loaves and the two fishes. And you will feed 5,000. Lord, please break this. Move upon it. Do everything you can, Lord Jesus, to help, the, to help each and every person in here to know what to give. We ask this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. I think Brother Hunter was on to something tonight. I think tonight's going to be a night of rejoicing. Amen? Why don't you go ahead and sing this with us? It's a little, little bit of a newer spin on an old song that we should all know. How many of you can't wait to get to heaven one of these days? Come on now. It's not to be a little more excited about heaven than that. Hallelujah. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and grace And in the mansions pride and blessed He'll prepare for us a place And I can see the light come in And I can see the day don't end When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing when we all see Jesus, then we will see and shout the victory. Yes, we will see and shout the victory. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see Jesus face to face. Oh, hallelujah. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be known. Soon those pearly gates will open. And we're gonna walk on streets of gold.
Shout the victory. Aren't you love the Lord and thank you for what he's doing? Amen. Brother Scott, come out and greet us tonight. When's the revival, Pastor? Bob, May 11th, 12th, and 13th. 10th, 11th, and 12th. 10th, 11th, and 12th, Southern Avenue Baptist. That's a revival that week, so you all making any plans, trying to get over there and support them. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Amen. I'm here to tell you he lives. How many know he lives tonight? Not only does he live, but he lives in me. He's in me. Amen. We thank God for being here tonight. Amen. You may be seated. We honor the Lord and what we feel in this place. Amen. We honor our leader here, our pastor, our bishop, amen, uh, Harper, and to his wife in her absence, amen, to all of the ministers, Brother Kuzman, and to others on the platform, we honor all of the saints of God. I tell you, amen, it's good to be in Jesus. Uh, I'm not guessing about it, but I'm in him, and I know he's in me, amen. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, amen. So good to see Brother Bob back there. And his wife, thank God for seeing them. Amen. I tell you what, some people get, uh, take, use this time to dress up and try to look pretty. But I tell you, I remember what Jesus done and the price that he paid for me on Calvary. Amen. I thank God. And not only that, but he went in the grave. On the third day, he rose up with all power in his hand. Amen. I'm just glad to be here tonight. May God continue to bless you. We're going higher and higher tonight. Come on, somebody say higher. Oh, throw your head back and say, higher. higher. We're going higher tonight. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I remind you, Brother Porter is preaching that revival on 7th Avenue Baptist. And it's going to be a great time in the Lord. To all of our guests tonight, we're glad you're here. And we want you to know you come to the church with a warm welcome. Why don't you look at somebody nearby through a visitor, just shake their hand or wave at them and say, we're so happy you're here tonight. God bless you for coming. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I was telling some folks today, I got mad at my dog last night. She uh, decided to escape the house, and she ran down the street as fast as she could. By the time we got her, I was so angry, I wanted to beat her, Sister Leanne. Got her into the house, and I put my hand down, and I barely touched her. Because I started laughing. Because what I was thinking about was how that when she went out that gate, she didn't look like no little little miniature schnauzer. She looked like a greyhound. She was running with all of her might. She wanted freedom. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the freedom of God tonight. Why don't you just get lost in the flow of his power tonight, in the freedom? Oh, the Lord's doing a great thing. Amen? Praise God. If you know this song, just sing it with me tonight. Lily of the valley, let your sweet aroma fill my life. Rose of Sharon, show me how to woe in beauty in God's sight. Fairest of 10,000, make me a reflection of your life. Day stars shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Oh, lead me, Lord, I'll follow. 
I see you standing near me, shining with compassion in your eyes. Oh, Jesus, shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Would you stand with me tonight? What a beautiful day to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. How many love Jesus? 
I mean, you really love the Lord tonight. Why don't you put your hands together and just thank him for a minute. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, I, I wouldn't be here for, if it weren't for Jesus tonight. We've had four people be baptized in the last four weeks. Three have received the Holy Ghost. God is moving. And we're not done. Amen. Just keep on bringing them. Keep on talking to people. And we're going to see what God's going to do. Do you love the bishop tonight? He said he just wants to preach. I just want to hear him preach. Amen. Respond tonight. We're going to see what God's going to do. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody said praise the Lord. We'll get into our Bible here. Bob Moore, we're glad you're here. You're in for a real education. And we're glad you're here to get it. So thank you for coming and being a part of it. Uh, I think y'all had requested me sing a song, but I best, I best take what voice I've got and use it for proclamation rather than singing. Everybody thank the Lord? Are you thanking the Lord? Are you glad there was a resurrection morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Scott, it's always good to see you. Brother Porter, it's always good to be in church with you. Bob, God bless you. Appreciate you, Brother Withers. Revelation 2 and 20 and 22. I'm notwithstanding... I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants and to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery and her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And she would not repent. Everybody say, would not repent. God bless you. I'm going to do my best to reach you. I don't want to preach at you. I want to preach to you tonight. Praise God. You may be seated. You're very familiar with it already, Tuesday, March 26th. The vessel called Dally left port at 12.39 a.m. Tuesday. And after it entered the channel there in Baltimore, there were signs of trouble about it. And about 1.25 a.m., when numerous of alarms started going off on the vessel, the National, the, the National Transportation uh, Security Bureau, they said that... Uh, it was, they realized that the steering rudder was the issue. And at 1.26 a.m. and 39 seconds, a pilot made a general call for nearby tugboats to come help them. Maryland Transportation Authority data from about the same time showed the pilot's association that he called the Transportation Authority during a duty about a blackout that had just taken place on the vessel. 127, the pilot commanded the ship to drop an anchor on the left side of the ship and, it, and added steering commands. And about 20 seconds later, the pilot issued a call to report that the Dally had lost all power and was approaching the bridge. About that time, the state transportation officer on duty radioed two units that were stationed at each end of that bridge saying to close the bridge to vehicular traffic. And they were already there because there was construction work. About 1.29 a.m., when the ship was traveling at 8 miles per hour, or 13 kilometers, it recorded that for 30 seconds there was this terrible sound of picking up of what was consistent with a collision with the bridge. The National Translation, uh, Transportation Security Board said a Transportation Authority dash camera also showed the lights on the bridge going out. Would you play for us what I ask you to play, our sound man? 
I need one of you guys on the south side, one of you guys on the north side. Hold all traffic on the key bridge. There's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. So until you get that under control, we got to stop all traffic. Just make sure no one's on the bridge right now. 313 dispatch, the whole bridge just fell down. Start, start, whoever, everybody. The whole bridge just collapsed. At 1.29 a.m., 39 seconds later, they reported that the bridge was down. Tonight, if it had not been for a call that closed that bridge, hundreds of people would probably have died, Brother Jerry, when that bridge fell. And so tonight, this is my sermon. I am preaching to you and to a nation that will not repent. I am preaching to you tonight May Day, May Day. This is a May Day call. I said, this is a May Day call. Let, let, me, let me start by establishing some things. And that is that repentance is the greatest gift since the fall of Adam. Every commodity of the gospel message, the grace and the mercies of God, are all predicated upon the unlocking with that act and execution and exercise of repentance. Yes, genuine repentance is a necessary thing, but we're living in a society today that absolutely resists repentance. In fact, it's one of the most difficult things to extract out of a congregation when you're preaching, and that is genuine repentance. Now the day has arrived that People will not endure sound doctrine. The scripture is fulfilled. After their own lust, they have heaped to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they said they've turned away their ears from the truth and they've turned unto fables. I want you to know what we have done. We have lived long enough to see a time when that corporate frustration is taking place of the grace and the gifts of God. He gave gifts to men. He gave them apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. But our society makes a living out of criticizing and trying to neuter preachers. They will not endure sound doctrine. They reject with increasing intensity the efforts of God to reach them. The gifts of the Spirit are mocked. They mock the idea of the gift of the word of wisdom. They mock the idea of another gift of the word of knowledge that's given by the Holy Ghost. They mock the, the gift of faith. They mock healing. They mock miracles. They mock prophecy. They mock the discerning of spirits. They mock speaking in tongues. And they mock the interpretation of tongues. Each gift is more intense and personally intimidating when that God begins to use it. You'd think that if God was going to take the time to send a gift into a service to reach you, whether it goes from wisdom to the interpretation of tongues, you'd think somebody would be, hey, I must be special. God's reaching for me. But there is a hardness. I'm telling you, there is a hardness. But can I tell you something else about the cross? I understand the preaching of the cross. It's to those that perish, it's foolishness. But unto us that are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolishness of this world, wisdom of this world made it foolishness? For after that is the wisdom of God. The world by wisdom knew not God, but it pleased God. Everybody say preaching. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. But we have a society. We have a society with a seared conscience. And with that seared conscience, they have decided not to be reached. Okay, America. Okay, America. Okay, Tri-State. I just got a message for you. I want you to tune in. This is what I want to tell you. And that is this. If you're going to dance, you've got to pay the fiddler. 
That's not profound. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a fact. And I also want to tell you something else. The issues that we face today, they go from the kindergarten to the highest institutions of learning. The problems we're facing today, they go from the courthouse to the outhouse to the White House. They go from the Chamber of Commerce to the chambers of the Supreme Court. And they kind of shrug their shoulders at it. Saints of God, if we ever needed an old-fashioned revival and repentance, we sure do need it now. See, we hear the challenges enumerated every day. You pick up the newspaper, you turn on the radio, you read the news feeds on your computer, or you see a television, and they're all screaming. They're all screaming what kind of trouble we're in. But yet, we will not repent as a nation. He said, I gave her a space to repent for her fornication, and she repented not. So here it is. May Day, May Day. The collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge at 1.27 a.m. That call was made. Play the May Day call one more time. Please, play it again. Like that cell phone ad, is there anybody out there? Can you hear me now? Let's play it again, please. Did you lock the computer up? Moment of impact. I need one of you guys on the south side, one of you guys on the north side, hold all traffic on the key bridge. There's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. So that until you get that under control, we got to stop all traffic. Just make sure no one's on the bridge right now. 213 dispatch, the whole bridge just fell down. Start, start, whoever, everybody, the whole bridge just collapsed. The whole bridge just collapsed. The workmen were on the bridge repairing it. But it is a sign, and that sign is this. We've been working on America, but we're doing too little, too late to save it. The lights went out, the power was lost, and the vessel lost its direction. And the bridge that was named for the man that wrote the Star Spangled Banner all of a sudden crashed into the ground, into the water. Oh, say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangle better yet wave or the land of the free? and the home of the brave. Now what a lot of people don't know, and young people you may not know, there's more verses to the Star Spangled Banner. On the shore, dimly seen, through the mist of the deep, where the foe's haughty host in dread silent repose, what is that which the breeze, or the towering steep, as a fitfully blows, half concealing, half disclose? Now it catches the gleam, of the morning's first beam. Its full glory reflects, now shines on the stream. Tis the star-spangled banner. Oh, long may it wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Oh, where is that band who so valiantly swore that the havocs of war and battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more. Their blood has washed out their footprints pollution. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the groom of the grave and the star-spangled banner in triumphant does wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. Now for everybody that doesn't like the idea of having God in our government, this is the adopted national anthem 
Oh, thus be it ever, when free men shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation, blessed with victory and peace may the heavens rescue land, praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. Thus conquer we must, when our cause it is just, and our motto shall be, in God is our trust, and the star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. It was written with religious tones as a respect not only to the banner, but also to the God that helped us have the America that we've enjoyed. But they've been messing with that for a long time. They didn't want God in their schools. They didn't want God in the courthouse. They didn't want God in the dramas. They didn't want us to put up signs that said, Merry Christmas. They wanted all of us to be deluded to Happy Holiday. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. It's, it's an amazing thing to see how God has given a wake-up call. How many of you know Brother Grimsley? Now, I'm, I'm in the middle, I, I'm telling you. I am dead center in the middle of preparing this message last Wednesday morning at 11.37 a.m. My phone rang. I picked it up, and in the middle of me preparing this message, the voice on the other end said, Brother Harper, I guess you know this is Brother Grimsley because you have caller's ID. I said, yes, sir, I do. He said... <laughs> Do you have a minute? Yes, sir, I have a minute. Would you listen to me? Yes, I will. He said, I'm going to tell you something that I've only said to one other person. And the Lord impressed me to call you and share this. After I tell you this, you may never want to speak to me again. You may think that I've totally lost my mind and that I'm living in an illusion and that, uh, and that I have no idea what I'm talking about. I said, well, Brother Grimsley, I trust you. What do you have to say? He said, Brother Harper, he said, the fall of this bridge, because it is named for the man that wrote the Star-Spangled Banner, is a sign to everybody that America is about to collapse. I said, okay. So all I can say to you tonight is this, America, America, this is a May Day call. This is a May Day call. Now, I, there's been a lot of talk about these eclipses and so forth that's taken place. Two of them's already passed, one of them's yet to come on April the 8th. But I do know that God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate day and night. And you're going to use them for signs and seasons and for days and years. I, I know that. I also know that the scripture said that there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on each nation there will be anguish and perplexities at the roaring and tossing of the sea. I know that. But, but just, just, just tolerate me for a little bit. Because once I was put onto this, it, it did get my attention. And I thought that it was worth at least talking about and repeating. And that was that with the, with the tracking of the first two eclipses, one was in 17, one was in, 20, that's gonna, was in 23, and now we've got another one that's coming here in 24. Uh, it's going to cross America. And as it crosses America, it goes across some places and it makes some lines. And one of the lines it makes in the, in the, in the, the shadow pattern that it put on the face of the earth is the, is the Greek and the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word Aleph and the, and the Greek word Alpha. And, uh, but, but they're both the same looking letter. And uh, simply have to say this, that it, it, it testifies to the fact that God's in control. Because God said, I'm Alpha and I'm Omega. I'm the start and I'm the stop. I'm the one that's going to someday say that time shall be no more. He is just that one in charge. It's kind of like his signature. And so in, in history, 
it, it's been noted that things like eclipses have been used to warn countries and warn nations. For instance, Nineveh. Nineveh was warned with a, with a great eclipse. And in the middle of all of that was this wonderful character by the name of Jonah. Now, a lot of people give Jonah a lot of grief. I personally think he's one of the greatest writers of the Old Testament because he's the only writer there that had enough courage to write about his own failure. And that took guts. He admitted it. It took guts to say it. But I'll tell you something else. With that, he did bring a message. And the message that he brought, it caused the city of Nineveh. But in the midst of him bringing the message that he brought to them, there was, historically, there was a great eclipse. And uh, that uh, they call it the Berg Segali eclipse. And uh, with it, it was, went right over the land of Nineveh while Jonah was there preaching for 40 days, warning the people of destruction that was coming. Did they repent? Yes, they did. And it's an amazing thing today how much like Nineveh America is today. And when you read about how wicked it was and how bad it was, I mean, girls... I don't think any one of you feel like you'd be safe today walking down the streets of New York with people running up and slugging women in the face just for the entertainment of doing it. Something bad wrong with this scenario. Something bad wrong with what's going on. Uh, what, what about the many things and, and just the butchering of so many people? It's incredible. But America mirrors Nineveh. In fact, Nineveh was known for the fact that if it didn't like a preacher, it took him out and skinned him alive and it took his hide and nailed it to the walls of the city. But here's what's going to happen on April the 8th. You ready for this? I found this striking. We, we looked this up because I, I wanted to make sure that somebody wasn't just writing something or saying something. Did you know that in the United States and Canada, there are eight communities that's called Nineveh? Eight communities, seven of them's in the United States, one of them is in Africa. What is so wild is this, that this eclipse that's going to black out as it runs from the southwest to the northeast is going to cross seven communities that are named Nineveh. Every one of them are going to be blocked out in the path of this. I'm not sure what all that means, but what I am telling you is this. God doesn't let things just happen for the sake of letting them happen. There's a Nineveh in New York, one in Virginia, one in Pennsylvania, one in Ohio, one in Indiana, one in Nineveh, Missouri, one in Texas. And so when these go over, it's going to block them out. Now, now here's something else. What, 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 what else is this? Is that... Uh, the first one on the 20th, 2017, when it went over, what is so incredible is there are seven communities in America that it went across that's called Salem. It went across Salem, Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, Nebraska, Missouri, Kentucky, and South Carolina. Seven of them. The eclipse went over seven Ninevehs. Here's something else that happened. Salem is the short term for Jerusalem. It seems to mean peace. And because that it was the city of the Jebusites, and it was the place where that the high priest by the name of Melchizedek was located, it becomes known as the city of peace, and that's the reason it's so important to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But having said that, what is interesting about that also is this is that that's the year that Mr. Trump gave the order to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. So it, it is a noteworthy thing, ladies and gentlemen, that things have become signs to countries. But also something else is that it's, Nineveh got a 40-day warning. The... Uh, the date of April the 8th happens to be 40 days before the Feast of, Feast of Pentecost on May the 18th, 2024. What's, what's that mean? 
I'm not sure, but I will tell you this. He said that he sent the Holy Ghost to reprove the world of sin. And so with that, there's a place. Everybody say room to repent. This is a mayday call. I'm simply saying we need to do some repenting and we need to do it fast and we need to do it with some people and we need to do it with some fasting and prayer. And what we want to know is this, is that God is going to, seven days if you please, that's, that's what is involved in these three eclipses. And so it'll be from that time of the first eclipse till now, seven years. And so he created the world in seven days. And there's going to be seven years of tribulation. And seven is used for completion. And seven puts us to the year of 2030. And you may or may not know it, but we heard the ambassador from the UN tell us that there is no calendar plan for the United Nations beyond the year of 2030. He said it. Interesting also. Is this all right? It's going to pass over top of a community that's called Jonah, Texas. And Jonah, Texas, it's going to pass over while that the constellation is in place over top of the city of a constellation called Cetus, which is the constellation of the whale. I'm not sure about what all that means. But I do know this. I know that the whole reason that that whale was employed or that large fish, it doesn't say a whale in the book of Jonah, it says a large fish, that that large fish was employed by God to wake Jonah up. Oh God, are you employing all of this to wake preachers like Edwin Harper up? To wake preachers like that's sitting in this audience tonight to wake us up and tell us that we've got a massive job to do to get the message on the airways, down the street, across the pulpit, in the alley, and down around the corner. Here's what was amazing. Jonah. Jonah. The city of Nineveh was a city of four days journey. That meant if you walked every street and byway of Jonah, it took four days to walk it. But he got excited and started running. And in one day, he ran down every alley, across every boulevard, down every avenue, up every street, and he had this message, repent for yet 40 days and God will destroy Nineveh. The Bible says it affected the king and he commanded that everybody go on a fast. Their cattle fasted, their pets fasted, their children fasted, but it was effective. The Bible said that at the end of the day that God, God changed his plans because of their repentance and 120,000 children were saved that weren't old enough to know their left hand from the right. It's interesting. This, uh, here's some other cities that this is going to pass over. Rapture, Indiana. Brother Koonsman, I don't know where it is, but do you know where Rapture, Indiana is? He, he, he'll look it up when we finish. It's going to pass over Rapture, Indiana. How many of you have been to the Ark Encounter? Been to the Ark Encounter? Williamston, Kentucky, it's going to pass over it. Eagle Pass, Texas. Anybody know what's famous about Eagle Pass, Texas? What? That's where that all of the crossing of the border and so many people are dying along with other things that's coming into the country. Eagle Pass, Texas. And also, where that the 2017 eclipse was, it came from the northwest to the southeast. This one's going from the southeast, southwest to the northeast. But where they cross, they cross a place in Illinois that's called Little Egypt. Are you aware that we're about to go into a season of the greatest population assault of 
locust that we have seen in 200 years. Are you aware of that? They tell me that the locust was one of those plagues in Egypt. And it happened before that Egypt lost those folks. Well, that's interesting. Everybody say earthquakes in divers places. There's a fault line that runs from Oregon down to all the way down into Louisiana. There's another fault line that runs down the Mississippi River called the New Madrid Fault Line. In fact, the, 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 the earthquake that happened back then in the 1800s is the reason there's a lake in the Ozark today. And then there's other fault lines that run across the U.S. What is so very, very interesting is this. How many of you are aware how powerful the pull of the moon is? Any roofers in here? Any roofers in here? There's one back there. Brother Johnny, if you put shingles on in the dark of the moon, what happens to them? They curl up. If you take a board out in the light of the moon and you lay it down on the ground, the grass will grow out around the board. If you lay it there on the dark of the moon, the grass will just grow up beside it and won't cover the board. Now, you say, oh, Brother Harper, that's just old wives' tale. Try it. I've stacked lumber long and hard. I know what it does. I also know that if you plant potatoes at the wrong time, that they'll pop to the ground, Dave Bolster, and the top of them will be green. Y'all still with me? And if you don't think that's not true, they took it out of the psychology books because they thought it was too insulting. But uh, you no longer can use the term lunatic. But the very word lunatic has to do with the lunar and something about a full moon. It still makes dogs howl and idiots. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that, was it? That wasn't culturally collect. But what I want you to know something is it moves the ocean they call it high tide, and they call it low tide. I have been in St. John's, New Brunswick, and I have uh, Nova Scotia, and I have seen the river run backwards in the low tide and run forward at high tide. I have seen it. I've witnessed it myself. It's the most amazing thing when it goes from low tide to high tide immediately the river just stops running. And then as long as it's high tide, that river runs backwards, up, back uphill, just backs up. And everybody say the power of the moon. Do you understand that there are many people that are of the opinion that there is a possibility with all of this heavenly e events that are happening that it may cause major earthquakes to happen in the United States. I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you that that's what they're saying. But what I will tell you is this. What are we going to do with what we know? I'm going to preach Jesus louder. I'm going to preach the coming of the Lord louder. I'm going to talk about the fact that we have come to the end of a dispensation. I'm going to tell you that signs of the time are everywhere. I want you to know something. Everything that's around us we're looking at, it all points to the fact that the Bible said, these are the signs before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And ladies and gentlemen, here we are. May Day. May Day. May Day. Praise God. Praise God. It is time for us to wake up to this. Jesus Christ is coming. 
You do know that when traumas come, good people and bad people suffer. So what I want to say to you is this. Are you, are you ready? You know, you may not... I've turned into an old man. Don't tell anybody. Guy saw me the other day, he said, Brother Harper, you haven't changed. I thought, who's your optometrist? <laughs> but in case you don't know it, I, I've turned into an old man. And I go to bed every night, not knowing if I'll get up tomorrow morning. You know what that makes me say? I want to be ready. I want to go to bed every night repented. I want to go to bed every night ready to meet God. I want to go to bed every night full of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want to do what's right. But what I do want you to understand is this, is that even if, even if you're a good person, you need to make sure your life's in order. Because if havoc comes to this old world, some of us may suffer things we didn't know we were going to suffer, but all of it's saying to the rest of the world, get yourselves ready. Jesus Christ is coming. Sinner, wherever you are, would you repent? It's a mayday call. It's a mayday call. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can stand with Sister Harper's having a real battle with her nerves. She wanted to be here bad today. But she had some challenges. I don't think she slept for about four nights. And I think the trauma of almost dying has really taken away her emotional sense of security. She needs your prayers. She needs your prayers. And uh, she was looking so forward to being here this morning, but she laid awake all night long. When morning come, she was actually trembling when I left the house this morning. So pray for her. Please pray for her. But Jesus Christ is coming. And how that Sister Harper and I feel physically has nothing to do with the way we feel about Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. I said, thank you, Lord, for your grace. Jesus. Say something to the person next to you like this. Jesus. Are you ready to meet God? Jesus. There is something. Something. About. That Are you ready? Mayday, Master, Savior, Jesus. They responded to the Mayday call just in time like to keep hundreds from dying. After, but it didn't happen rain. soon enough to save the lives of six constructors. Oh, Jesus, but Jesus. Jesus, it's a mayday call. Jesus, let all of heaven and earth proclaim. Let's all come forward right now. Let's all come forward. They'll all pass away. But there but is something, there's something about. Why don't you come and pray? A mayday calls gone out. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Find a place to pray. Jesus. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. About. 
Pray for your friends. Pray for our nation. Us, Lord. Like the oh, we want to be ready after. We want to be ready, Jesus. We don't know the day of the hour when the Son of Man is going to come. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 
everybody's still here, Bishop. Mm -hmm. Well, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Oh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Well, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Well, there be no more dying there. We are going to see the King. There be no more dying there. We are going to see the King. Yes, there be no more dying there. We are going to see the King. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. There'll be no more sickness there. We are going to see the King. There'll be no more sickness there. We are going to see the King. There'll be no more sickness there. We are going to see the King. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. Hallelujah. Amen. How many know somebody that needs the Lord tonight? How many know somebody strayed away from the Lord needs to come back? I tell you what the bishop always says, you pray about them. Talk about them to Jesus. Then go talk to them about Jesus. And then go talk to them about Jesus again. And talk to Jesus about them again. Amen. And invite them to the house of God. Hallelujah. Well, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light could never fill my soul. Well, he paid my heart in love, then wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer is turning, you know a little fire is burning, and you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my past is real without a ray of cheer, and then a little cloud of Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He'll hear our faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer returning, you know a little fire is burning. You'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Well, all right. Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord. Well, can't nobody 
Nobody, 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 nobody. 